This is Ecotricity's Ecotech Roundup show from Aotearoa's first and only climate positive certified renewable electricity provider. We only source from wind, hydro and solar and we are the leading supplier of electricity to EVs and Aotearoa. Switch today at ecotricity.co.nz. Welcome back to another roundup of news from the world of clean cars and green energy. Thanks for joining me. We're starting with EV quarterly estimates, which I know aren't everyone's cup of tea. So if you want to skip to the rest of the video, just use the chapter markers below or fast forward to this part of the video. Since we officially started Q4 this week, Q3 figures are now getting published and be aware that some are global while some are US based. So I'll try and do my best to note the difference. Tesla first. It published global figures for Q3, showing that it built 469,796 vehicles, delivering 462,890. This is broadly in line with Wall Street expectations. GM published its US figures this week, showing EV sales for the quarter totaled 32,095, up 60% year over year and up 46% on Q2. Nearly one third of those sales came from the Chevrolet Equinox EV, followed closely by the Cadillac Lyric. Ford had a good quarter too, selling 23,509 EVs in the US, up 12% year over year, but slightly down on the previous quarter. Despite this, it slipped to third place in year-to-date EV sales behind Tesla and GM. While Hyundai's US EV sales are slightly down year-to-date when compared to last year, the Ionic 5 and Ionic 6 helped the brand set a new third-quarter EV sales record with just under 14,000 models sold, not including Kona EVs. Meanwhile, sibling brand Kia, while it hasn't published its quarterly figures officially yet, confirmed that although its EV6 sales weren't stellar in September, its EV9 enjoyed its third best sales month ever, with just over 2,000 examples sold in September. While I'm talking about September-only sales, Volvo was celebrating the fact that in September, its EX30 represented one quarter of all of its global sales, with the EX30 selling 9,600 110 models around the world, also allowing it to become Europe's second best-selling EV for the month. NEO celebrated an exceptional quarter for the brand, with 61,855 EVs sold during Q3, which is up 11.6% year-over-year. It's quickly becoming a very established brand in China alongside BYD, thanks in part to its battery swap tech. And finishing off the quarterly and monthly reports, BYD celebrated a new record quarter, selling more than 1.1 million new energy vehicles. Of those, 443,426 were EVs. Well done! Enelex, the energy and charging specialist, which acquired the Juicebox and JuiceNet software from its original developer, eMotorWorks, has announced it's leaving the US and Canada, leaving owners of its charging stations completely in the lurch. As we've detailed previously on this channel, Juiceboxes and JuiceNet were incredibly reliable until its acquisition, and since then, Enelex has rapidly broken that reputation through forced, unfunctional updates that removed the very functionality that the these charging stations were once renowned for. This week, the company sent out an email to registered users saying it was pulling out of the market and would no longer offer after-sales support. It's even pulling its associated apps from the US smartphone app stores. Several companies have stepped up to offer support to displaced NLX customers, primarily for fleet use. But Fear not, because TE has now got a dedicated room in its Discord chat where folks can discuss ways to regain control of their juice boxes. Well, Volkswagen AG isn't having the best year in terms of EV sales, and we've heard rumours about Audi, Volkswagen and Porsche brands revising EV goals. One of Volkswagen AG's European brands, Skoda, has just unveiled a new model. Enter the Skoda Elrock. It's a compact SUV that's basically a twin to the Volkswagen ID.4. 
available in two different guises. The LROC 50 comes with a 52 kilowatt hour usable battery pack and 125 kilowatt rear wheel drive motor for 375 kilometers WLTP range, while the LROC 85 comes with a larger 77 kilowatt hour usable battery pack and 210 kilowatt rear motor for 581 kilometers of range. Prices start from around 33,000 euro. EVs are statistically far less likely to catch fire than internal combustion engine vehicles, but when things do go wrong, these fires get a lot of attention. So you might be pleased to know about two different announcements this week that could help reduce EV fire risk further. First, LG Chem announced midweek that it's developed a new temperature responsive material that can act as an electrical fuse in the event of thermal runaway. What's more, it claims the material can help prevent short circuits in the event of cell puncture. Also this week, Volkswagen-backed battery company 24M showcased its Impervio separator material, a new addition to batteries that can dramatically reduce the risk of battery fires caused by overcharging or overheating. Let us know in the comments if you'd like us to do a deep dive on either of these. While Tesla superchargers have been open to pretty much any appropriately equipped EV in the majority of the world, for years. In the US and Canada, it's still very much a new thing. Ford was the first automaker to get official supercharger access for its customers, followed by Rivian. And in the last month, most GM vehicles gained supercharger access. And that's led to some altercations at Tesla supercharger stations as Tesla owners start to express their frustration at non-Tesla owners charging. But for what it's worth, some of the frustration is valid, as some non-Tesla owners are opting not to follow official advice on how to park and charge, instead blocking as many as four spaces with their vehicle. At the same point, though, I've also heard tales of aggressive Tesla owners treating those who have parked according to Tesla's official instructions, acting really badly. So just as a reminder, please be considerate, park appropriately and share. You would have to be pretty petty to spoil someone's day over an EV charging session, regardless of the badge on your vehicle. While there is plenty right now about the UK, which isn't demonstrative of a forward-thinking progressive society, and I know friends and family there are increasingly frustrated with some of the policy decisions being made on their behalf, I do have some good news from the UK to share. This week, 142 years after the first coal-fired power station in the world opened in London, the UK officially decommissioned its very last coal-fired power station. The station in the Nottinghamshire village of ratcliffe on saw has become increasingly unnecessary in the last five years as the UK has relied more and more on renewable sources of electricity to provide the power needed for the national grid. Its decommissioning now means the UK national grid can look forward to its first first truly coal-free winter. That is phenomenal. And finally for the segment, as we'll detail a little later in the show, thanks to more and more automakers adding some form of vehicle-to-load capability to their vehicles, we're seeing EVs pushed into service more frequently when the power grid goes down. V2L, regardless of it being a few kilowatts of backup power or the ability to back up your entire home in an emergency, not only helps ensure extra resilience for your household, but when paired with two-way charging, can actually help the local grid cope with peaks in demand, which is why California Governor Gavin Newsom just signed a new law into effect this week that could eventually lead to a requirement that all EVs sold in the state have bi-directional charging. Right now, the law only calls on the state's Air Resource Board, Energy Commission and Public Utilities Commission to examine bi-directional charging. But that does give those agencies power in the future to set requirements for bi-directional charging. Before we get to the last two stories, I have a quick question. Are you in the market for a new EV? If you are and you're in Aotearoa, you should totally check out our very own buyer's guide at ecotricity.co.nz. It's packed with all the information you need to pick a car that's right for you and includes plenty of details about available vehicles, daily life with an EV and so much more. So follow the link below and start your journey today. If you've been watching the news this week, you may have seen some of the devastation left behind in the US after Hurricane Helene passed through. 
While the mainstream news might be obsessed with the video of a Tesla bursting into flames as the hurricane flooded a garage, it's worth noting that any vehicle can catch fire in salt water if the right short circuit is created, be it battery or ice. We're also hearing stories of EVs being used to keep people safe and their homes powered. And in at least one case, a Rivian R1T, which was carried a substantial distance by the ensuing floods, survived its ordeal and continued to operate. However fun it might be to turn on your EV after a flood, however, please don't. While uncontaminated water doesn't conduct electricity well, water that is chock full of salts and contaminants would quite happily conduct water, and that may spell trouble for you and your EV. And finally, we are now officially into the month of Halloween, and that means time for spooky fun. And thanks to over-the-air updates, some EVs are joining in for the season's vibes. Last year, we had a Mercedes-Benz EQE during Halloween, and it displayed pumpkins on the dash for one day only. And last year, Rivian decided to add zombies to its dashboard visualization, replacing humans with zombies on screen. This year, this year Rivian's got something a little different planned, with a teaser video promising Night Rider mode. Because the R1T and R1S have massive segmented LEDs across their hoods that can change colour to denote charging status, it looks like Rivian is planning a red LED sweeping effect just like Kit had in the classic 80s TV show. Are you planning anything special for Halloween this year? Don't forget to tell us in the down below. And on that note, we are done for the day. Before I go, though, do make sure you've hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on the latest in EV news from this channel. And of course, if you haven't switched yet, why not switch to Aotearoa's first and only climate positive certified renewable electricity provider? It is super easy to make the switch and you'll be helping the nation wean itself off dirty energy and onto clean green power that will keep the land beautiful for generations to come. I'll be back next week as usual. And in the meantime, do check out other videos on this channel, including the from the lovely Gavin Kiwi Evie Shoebridge. He's been driving all the fun cars lately. Thanks for joining me. I'm Nikki Gordon Bloomfield. Have an amazing rest of your week. Kakite! See you next time.